evening to you on Fellowship Day 257. Slowly but surely trying to get back on the regular bandwagon, bringing more episodes more regularly. Getting off that lame but ever-present excuse of being busy with other things. Uh, There's plenty that's come to mind, plenty of that I want to share with you. And I've got some preparations in the works for uh, a series of episodes related to the imposter phenomenon as I get closer to launching that book that I keep talking about but still isn't out any way. Here we go. So what's the thing I want to share with you today? Well, one of the main things I've done in the past few weeks is to very much try to simplify the entrepreneurial thread of activity that I've got going on. I mention this because one of the main things I want to be able to share, one of the things I get asked about a lot, is the balance between academic research, traditional academic work, and attempts at making that work more impactful through entrepreneurship. But beyond that, not just the work-related entrepreneurship, but my my uh, more personal taste, my my want to be an entrepreneur, my desire to run experiments and try to make money, as well as trying my hand at being an academic and creating new knowledge. I, I don't want to be one or the other. I like being a scientist, but I also like business. And I think there's value in learning both. Whether or not I've been successful in one other, both or neither, doesn't really matter. I think there's value in being able to see both sides of the coin, being able to speak both languages, being someone who's happy to dance with jargon, but also someone who can peel it away and show what the economic impact, potential return on investment for turning some knowledge into a product or a service. You know, these things, I think, are often seen as a divide. They're one skill set or another. But I've found that along the way, there's been real value to being able to learning, uh, like being able to speak a little bit of both languages, learning it um, and seeing what happens. But, and there it is, that big brooding, foreboding, grey cast conjunction. But all of that effort trying to be both the academic and the entrepreneur isn't an exercise in making my head any bigger than it needs to be. It's massive enough. But it's an easy way to spread yourself thin. Trying to do too much. Trying to be all things to all people. I love being the jack of all trades. But it leads you to spread yourself very thin. Now that sounds rather woolly, but what I'm coming to here and a theme today around simplification is what I've had to do to be able to manage that and what I've seen as symptoms of spreading myself too thin. On the Academic Fellowship, the thing that's really kick-started this podcast, you know, that is a full-time job running a research team producing or trying to produce high quality research in an area that hasn't seen as much development as it could have, an area that has potential fundamental and applied industrial impact. Again, not going into the details for now, but all of that on its own, for those in academia, satisfies most. And that's not even hinting at a lot of the administrative teaching-based work that increases over time in such a job. And I'm getting to that stage now and you can see just how demanding and how justified it is to place 100% of your thought and time in that mindset. And I'm not taking that away from anyone who does that. I'm just admitting here for the good of my own well-being and to minimise my own anxiety of thinking that should be one way rather than the other. I'm not that person. I'm not 100% academically minded. But trying that experiment in business, trying to be the entrepreneur, has in part led to a circumstance where I've not registered 
or opened one company in my life. I've to this date, at my early stages of entrepreneurial adventure, opened two companies. The reasons for that was one is what one's a, a mechanism for personal speaking work. One's a mechanism that that same one is the, a mechanism on which I want my uh, books, uh, books outside of academia to to flourish. I dare say, I hope to crash and burn, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, I'm rambling. So one company I've set up for those personal experiments in entrepreneurship, sort of spearheaded by attempts to write and publish a book or books. The other company was set up around some earlier work uh, our research team did that looked like it could be a research spin out uh, a standalone venture something that goes from research all the way through to product and there's still possibilities of that but at this early stage I'd essentially created two companies with two sets of accounts two sets of paperwork and half the time needed to do just one of those right and having those two companies has led to, I said I was coming to some symptoms of spreading myself too thin. Some of the symptoms that made me realise I needed some simplification here was when I got letters saying that uh, some accounts were due that if if this wasn't done soon, then there would be penalties incurred. Now, there hasn't been anything as serious as that, but it was just seeing that in paper form made me think, right, okay, the big boys and girls out there who are doing this professionally and who are entrepreneurs full time uh, don't ever let things get to that stage. But me trying to spread myself too thin did. And I realised, OK, what what's going on here? Why am I allowing things to drag out in time so much that I'm getting this little jump scare that I can sort out very quickly? So in some so far, there's all of the academic work I've not even mentioned commitments in the home life. And then at the same time, because I like to work between these worlds of business and academia, I've somehow set up two companies and tried to run them. And to my eternal discredit, if that's even a word, I try to do too much all by myself with minimal help, minimal delegation. And so what I've done is to maintain what I actually want to do, you know, not to give up work or experiments in one space or the other. I'm simplifying by getting rid of one of those companies. I'm consolidating all efforts that can be consolidated into one business rather than two. So there's elements of both that overlap. And if one day the second business um, grows back to a point where it looks like it can be scalable and and spun out as a standalone entity with support through known mechanisms, then so be it. But right now that doesn't need to exist and soon it will no longer exist. And that has been an educational experience for several reasons on several dimensions. Being able to simplify is one, understanding how long it takes to shut down a company versus to start one has been another massive eye-opener. Needing the help of professional accountancy to do that has been another. Understanding that a business can exist and uh, trade with a formal name but be branded with another is a fourth thing that's come out of this. At times, very painful process of simplifying um, to get rid of one business and consolidating it all into another. But having done it, having gone through the pains of many an email with an accountant to figure out how to get from beginning to end, from submitting final accounts to closure of one company and figuring out how I can trade all within one company. All, all of that was nosebleed worthy at times, but having done it, gone through those pains, I've now had the experience of all those things I've mentioned of knowing how long it takes, how to associate branding with the formal company structure. I could go on and on, but the general point is 
it has been an experiment, a risk worth and one I was able to take without causing undue harm to myself or others in my care. And what cannot be taken away is what I've learned from that. And I feel brilliant, stronger, more ready, willing, able to tackle these things again and again. I've got focus now on this one business that has got the book experiment coming up. And should that succeed, should uh, some revenue come in, should more support for one business come in, then um, that could lead to bigger and better things. Uh, All of it because... I've um, endured the rather painful experiment that's ongoing now of taking two companies into one, simplifying in order to be in order to maintain some interest in two worlds that look very separate from one another. This has been a long way around today. I hope some of this is of use to you. I say all of this as I stare out the window reflecting on it. I realise I've said I, I, I a lot. I'm no stranger to making this all about me. But I do hope it's of some value. If you might be someone out there who's thinking, oh, I'd love to start a business, but I've got no idea how. Or, you know, I'd love to be able to work with someone scientifically minded to build a new product for my business, but I don't know how. The way I've put this out in one of my little cheesy daily thought posts is in three words, and those are the following. To learn, do. To learn, do. You can read about something as much as you want, hear about it from others, but until you do it yourself, you'll never truly learn. So everything I've said there, the valuable side, the positive side in it, has been my experience of living that advice out. In order to learn the nitty gritty of business, I've had to do the nitty gritty of business. But now, crucially, and in closing, the theme for today is not just to learn, it's not just to do in order to learn, but simplify in order to maintain. There's only so much of you to go around. So consider how you can keep things simple in order to be able to try everything that you want to experiment with. Have a good evening. Hope it's been a good day so far. Thanks as always for being here. Reach out on the website, on the episode web pages, if you've got a question for me, and we'll put it out on a future Q&A episode for now. Have a good one, and I'll see you again soon for another episode of the Read Indeed podcast. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series, the daily thought series, and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to dr mark readcom That's dr-mark with a c-reid.com.